partly swallowed a mouthful of saliva, shivering nervously. What? Do you have something you want to say to me? Ivy was holding a long pistol in her hand. The body of the pistol was covered with silver, and it looked absolutely murderous. It matched the look in Ivy's eyes. Hartley had no doubt that if he hit her, the mad woman opposite him would never hesitate to pull the trigger. Ivy's actions also scared the other people around them. Hartley was not the only one who was frightened by the sudden appearance of a pistol. Looking at the pale faces of those beach management staff behind Hartley, anyone could tell that they were terrified. The rest of the people present were also in a commotion. At the critical moment, many people, including the Torpedo General, stepped forward again to pacify the turbulent crowd. Moe was very dissatisfied and reprimanded Ivy. Stop with the gun! Who told you to raise your gun in front of civilians? Ivy curled her lips and reluctantly inserted the pistol back into her waistband. Aiden looked at her bulging waist, wondering how he hadn't seen it before. He had just been in a dispute with her. He had been inches from death and he hadn't known it. But at the same time, he began to wonder about the identity of the two people. It wasn't every day that you saw a young woman who was so confident with a gun. Aiden found the entire situation, and all the players in it, endlessly odd. The most curious, however, was Hartley, who had been nearly scared to death. When Ivy took the pistol back, Hartley could no longer hide the fear in his heart, and he sat down on the ground. The sweat flowed down freely, dampening his clothes and the sand under him. Hartley didn't care about the prying eyes of all the people around him. He looked up at Mo. His previous arrogance had already disappeared, and all that remained was horror and fear. You, who are you? Facing Hartley, who was trembling all over, Mo did not reveal his identity. Instead, he walked slowly to Hartley with his hands behind his back. Looking down at him, he said with no expression, Water that can carry a boat can also overturn it. It's a good phrase. It tells us that anyone that takes for granted the things that carry them will one day be destroyed by it. You, as a public employee, are carried by the people. The powerful words hit Hartley's mind and scared him even further. At this moment, Hartley thought of a man who often appeared on the TV news. He invoked sayings like that quite a bit. He combined the image of that man with the one in front of him, and his heart sank even further. You could keep running your restaurant. He turned to Aiden faintly. Everyone watched as he staggered away. Not far down the beach, he lost all sense and fainted onto the ground. Aiden winked at Lincoln. Lincoln immediately understood and said to the staff of the beach management office, who were equally scared, Your director is clearly suffering from heat stroke. Aren't you going to send him to the hospital? The crowd of onlookers were absolutely defeated. How could you get heat stroke on such a cold night? Couldn't the poor man be spared the one final ridicule? Hartley was lifted up and carried from the midnight snack corner in dismay. This storm passed, strangely, but quietly overall. In the distance, Spinelli, who saw this scene from his office window, was so angry that he smashed the pair of binoculars he was using into pieces. Well, what shall we do now? Kelly clearly shared his dismay. She never thought that even Hartley couldn't suppress Aiden's edge. Aiden was one lucky son of a gun, at the very least. And now she was at a loss too. It had taken a lot to bribe Hartley into shutting down Midnight Snack. For now, we can't compete with that guy by ordinary means. He's just much more powerful than we thought. The anger in Spinelli's eyes was gradually replaced by renewed energy as the wheels in his head turned. The last time he had been so serious, it had been when he had ordered the death of the people who had harmed his father. Looking at the ruthlessness in Spinelli's eyes, Kelly was infatuated. There was nothing she loved more than a violent man. Just as Mo and Ivy were about to go back into their car, someone approached them from the beach. You two, please wait! Seeing who it was, Ivy raised her eyebrows and turned to leave anyway. But Mo waved his hand to let Aiden come over to them. Yes, it was Aiden who was chasing desperately after the two. He carried several takeout boxes. With a smile, Aiden handed the boxes to Mo. You guys never finished your food! We don't like to take advantage of the guest at the midnight snack corner. Besides, it's not right to waste food like this. Looking at Aiden's playful smile, Mo immediately chuckled. He touched the box, and his eyes narrowed. Young man, how can these things still be hot? 
Have you replaced them with the human soul? Aiden shrugged. I don't know who you guys are, but I really owe you one. I asked the kitchen to heat the dishes for you so you can eat them on the road. It's a small thank you gift. Of course, I still don't agree with your eating habits. It's just spoiling the food. Ivy's jaw set. Who are you making fun of, punk? Mo was stunned and then burst into laughter. His laugh was like the clear rain that washed everything clean and it instantly washed away the haze in Aiden's heart. Ivy glanced at Mo in doubt and wondered about Aiden. What kind of charms did he have? The old man hadn't been this happy in years. After laughing, Mo shook the boxes in his hand and said in a teasing way, In that case, I will obey your instructions and will not spoil this food. He got into the back seat of the black Audi. He turned his head and gave a strange smile to Aiden. Young man, we will meet again. Aiden was still pondering this sentence when Mo and Ivy had both gotten into the car. After the roar of the engine, the black Audi was gone. What a strange pair. I hope we do see each other again, Aiden remarked, shaking his head. He moved in the direction of the midnight snack corner. Meanwhile, inside the black Audi, Mo looked at the boxes in his hands, and his eyes flashed with concentration. It was like he was trying to see through them. After a while, he took his opportunity while Ivy was focused on driving. He opened a box, reached in and grabbed a lettuce wrap in his hands, shoving it into his mouth with childlike glee. Ugh, it's amazing, he yelled with delight. 